Welcome to week eight, Explore the Bible. Today we're starting an entirely new section. We finished with Job last week, and so today we're diving into a real easy book. It's one that's, uh, you know, not real difficult to understand. It's Ecclesiastes. Uh, I say that obviously tongue in cheek. It's a tough book uh, because, well, I'll tell you, the writer who's Solomon, King Solomon, the son of David, he is diving into some deep stuff and some deep thoughts and and it's hard because there's some frustration there that um, I think we often would rather pretend maybe doesn't exist or we'd rather not have to deal with. And certainly we know it's real. We know that it exists. We know that, that we have these emotions, these feelings that, that almost everybody does. And so it's helpful, I think, to go through this because the truth that he brings out for us is really, really important. So we're going to start with just for the first couple of chapters today and kind of look at what uh, what um, Solomon talks about and kind of get us into the feel for what's going on in the book. He says, chapter 1, I, the teacher, have been king over Israel and Jerusalem. I applied my mind to examine and explore through wisdom all that is done under heaven. God has given people this miserable task to keep them occupied. I've seen all the things that are done under the sun and have found everything to be futile, a pursuit of the wind. What is crooked cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. Well, that's a joyful beginning, right? And this phrase, everything is futile, that is kind of the, the byword of the book. Vanity is the King James Version. Everything is in vanity, right? Yeah, it's, it's useless. It's frustrating. You don't get where you think you're going to go. So he's first, we, he's identified himself. He's the king over Israel, right? So he says, I've looked at wisdom. I've tried to explore wisdom. And, and then he says this great sentence here, like this, God has given people this miserable task to keep them occupied. It's a little bit of a clue to what Solomon discovered as he dove deep into wisdom, as he, he discovered wisdom. And yet in many ways, he thought finding wisdom would be the answer, that finding wisdom would give life meaning, that finding wisdom would make life worth living in a sense. But do you get this little clue here? God's just given us this miserable task of finding wisdom just to keep us busy because he didn't get where he wanted to go, right? He says, I've seen everything done. I found everything to be futile, to be useless. It's a pursuit of the wind. And that's a beautiful picture, isn't it? Pursuing the wind. What does that bring to mind? chasing the wind. Can you chase the wind? Uh, you know, what's the point? Can you ever catch it? You'll never catch the wind, right? You, you, you can chase it, I guess, if you want, but you'll never get it. You'll never grab hold of it. And, and he says, that's what I found that in all of these things that I looked at, I, I didn't find any satisfaction. Everything was futile. Everything was frustrating to me. It didn't get me where I wanted to go. What is crooked, and boy, what a statement here. What is crooked cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. It, that it just doesn't, doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how hard you go at it. It doesn't matter if it's what it is. And he talks about, look, um, I, I tried pleasure. I tried laughter. I partied. I, I worked. I did everything. I tried to find wisdom. I went to school, right? I, I got all the learning I could get. Nothing. Nothing in none of these things that I find satisfaction. Chapter two, I hated all my work that I labored at under the sun because I must leave it to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether he will be a wise or a fool and he will take over all my work that I labored at skillfully under the sun. This too is futile. Okay, here he's talking about work and read earlier in chapter two, he talks about some other things, you know, pleasure and laughter and other things. He, he said, I did all of that. I lived it up and, and that was futile too. But here he's talking about work and he says, I, I worked. And he said, I hated it. Why did he hate his work? He hated it because he knows at some point he's going to die. And when he dies, he's just going to leave everything to the next person. All the stuff that he's worked on, everything that he's labored on, somebody else is going to get that, right? They're going to, going to enjoy it. And what are they going to do with it? Who knows? Are they going to be wise? Are they going to be full? Are they going to use it wisely? Are they going to waste it? What are they going to do with it? I don't know. I'll be dead. And here all this stuff I've worked at could just potentially just go away. You go into meaninglessness. It could, it could just go into into disarray, or it could it could fall apart. They could not take care of it, and it could just I could build a beautiful building, and and it could just fall down. You know, you don't know how they're going to take care of it. So, 
She said, they can take over all my work. They get it all. I've worked at it hard. I've, I've worked skillfully. They get it. They ruin it. So what's the point? What's the point? I'm going to tell you, this, this is a question that I think a lot of people are asking. I think there are a lot of people in this world that are asking this question, what is the point of all of this? And they have tried everything. And I think we look in our world today and we see people trying everything. They're doing all kinds of different things, somehow looking for some kind of joy, some kind of lasting meaning, satisfaction, some something to ease the, the longing. Now, here's the thing. I believe that God puts within every person he creates, he creates within you a longing for him, an emptiness. Uh, um, I think it's Billy Graham calls it a God-sized hole, right? He This emptiness. And, and we try to fill it, and we try to fill it with everything that we can. We think of all different kinds, and we, we don't get it. Because it, nothing fills that hole. Only one thing fills that hole. And he says, man, I tried work, and it just didn't. It didn't do it for me. Look at this. He says, for, for what does a person get with all his work and all his effort that he labors at under the sun? For all his days are filled with grief, and his occupation is sorrowful. Even at night, his mind does not rest. This too is futile. You have that feeling of you go to work, and when you come home, you're still thinking about work. And it, sometimes you got a project or something you're doing, and, and, and you're staying up. It's hard to sleep. You wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it, trying to, trying to solve that problem. He, he says, man... I'm doing all this, and I'm realizing that, that as I'm going through this, I'm thinking, well, even if I get it all right, when I die, what's going to happen to it? What, what will result? It's futile. It's, it's useless. You know, what's the point of all this? I just don't see how there's a point that, that where I'm going to get where I want to go. This, this is his frustration. Can you identify with that? Can you sense what that is and that feeling and how people have that feeling, share that? So he says this then, okay? There is nothing better for a person than to eat, drink, and enjoy his work. Nothing better than to eat, drink, and enjoy his work. I've seen that. Even this is from God's hand because who can eat and who can enjoy life apart from him? This here, right here, this is the key, okay? This is the key to this whole thing because this is what he discovered. He discovered that you just have to enjoy the work. You just have to do the work, but realize that the work is not where the satisfaction is. The work is not where you're going to find your meaning. The work is not what's going to last. If you're looking for the work to give meaning to your life, then you're going to be very frustrated because you know sooner or later you're going to die. And when you die, what, are, what happened to all your work? It's all gone, right? So, so, so you have to enjoy your work and for the work's sake, but not for the meaning you get from it, because what you need is you need God. You cannot enjoy life apart from Him. For to the person who is pleasing in His sight, He gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner, He gives the task of gathering and accumulating in order to give to the one who's pleasing in God's sight. This too is futile and a pursuit of the wind. He says, if you don't know the Lord, if you're not walking with God, if you don't have that relationship with him, and that's how he defines this, you know, the person who is pleasing in his sight in the sinner. He's not saying that he's perfect or without sin. He, he's talking about the person that completely rejects God, that doesn't seek God, that doesn't try to serve God. Here's what's going to happen. They're just going to work. It's going to be frustrating to them. They're going to come to the end of their life. They're going to be dead, and their work's going to go to somebody else. And what was the point of it all? They did all of that, and now they're dead. Who cares? What difference does it make? But if you have served the Lord, the Lord gives you wisdom, knowledge, and joy, and you have found joy. Boy, that's, that, that's a big word. It's three letters. It's a huge word for Solomon because that's the thing. It's not futility, pursuing the wind, chasing after the wind. It is joy. He, he finds joy there with the Lord. His joy is with God and his relationship with God, not in the work. He, he says, I enjoy the work because I, I'm enjoying God and I'm just doing the work, but I'm not finding meaning in the work. I'm not finding my life in the work. I'm finding my life and my meaning in Christ, ultimately, right? Solomon wouldn't say Christ, but we would say in Christ. I tell you, this, this is a lot, a lot of America. We're workaholics, we work all the time. We've got that good work ethic. God designed us for work. He didn't make us for that, but not to find our meaning in work. Our meaning is found in our walk with God, not in our, our travails of, 
of effort of building things and putting things together because that's all going to go away. It'll all go away. Look, I grew up, uh, my dad in the oil field, so I know, I know, man, you can build it and then it'll all go in, in, in a heartbeat, you know, and as soon as it's, as it's there and you think it'll always be that way, don't think that because it will, it can all go in, in just a few weeks, months, years, it can all be gone. You know, that's just the way the oil field is. That's the way a lot of industries are. And well, that's the way life is, you know. You work and, and trial and labor, and if that's all that, that your life has been about, when you get to the end, what was the point? It's all gone anyway. Hey, I hope this helps as you study and get prepared. It's going to be a great book. I'm looking forward to going through Ecclesiastes with you. So uh, like, comment on it. Let me know what you're learning from it, uh, how you're teaching it. Um, share it with other people. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. All right, and we'll see you next time.